Uh, right, here's something which I forgot to mention at the time, and uh, it's a little bit more about um, accessing arrays. And um, I've labelled it as 7b because I forgot to mention it. Okay, here's a here's a bit of notation. Um, the thing in front of any uh, um, any uh, array expression like this is called the array reference expression, and inside the brackets is the index expression. Right, well, there's nothing difficult about that. Now, um, what I forgot to mention was that um, the array reference expression is evaluated before the index expression. Now, you might not think that makes a difference, but um, I'm going to give an example soon which um, shows how it does make a difference. And um, here we go. Here's the uh, here's an array A of uh, integer type, um, and I've uh, initialized it to that. And um, here's another array B, which is also initialized to that, and C is uninitialized. And you can write them like this with commas between because they're all the same type. They all take this type here. And uh, here's two methods. Uh, one returns an integer array, that's that one. And one returns an array of an array, which is set to that. And just to make a point, I've put as many extra commas as is possible into this just to um, I just because I can and just to remind you that you're allowed to do that though of course in reality you'd never do that but uh, just to make that clear right here's the um, here's the example that shows the difference we've got an array A here and uh, uh, so we're referring to this array here, and this is evaluated first, so it's this thing that we're referring to. And then we do some computation to work out which element we're referring to, and um, that computation changes the value of A. As you can see, it sets A equals B. But of course we're still referring into this array because this is evaluated first, so it's that that's worked out. and. Um, B is set to it and we take the value 1 which is 5 in this case so yeah, that will produce 50 now notice if it was the other way around we evaluated the inside bit first we'd get a different result because then um, A would be set to B so you take that would be 5 then and B would be effectively used there so it would be 9 if it was evaluated in the other order uh, right, now just to make a point, you can have expressions, array reference expressions. They can't be that complex, but uh, here's an example of what one might look like. Um, we've taken the return value from that function and assigned it a few times and then done some uh, computed a value, the second element there, which will be 300. Right. Um, now this expression here is, um, these are all pathological examples by the way, you should never write code like this. Uh, this expression here is about as complicated as I can make it. Well actually I pro could probably make it a bit more complex than this, but it will do. Right, um, we take EX2 for a start, so it's the return value from this, so we're looking at this array of array there. Okay, and we're indexing it with something between there, so Let's look at what we're indexing it with. We've got um, uh, A equals B, so that's more or less irrelevant as far as the indexing is concerned. Just keep that in the back of your mind. And then we're taking the fourth element from that. So that's one, naught, one, two, three, four, so that's two. So that's effectively two in there, right? So that's naught, one, two. So we're referring to this array there. And we're setting that to be B. Okay, so B is then copied into there, or rather, the reference there is then made to point to B. Right, then we're then going to index into that with something. So we're looking into this array here. And the thing we're indexing into it with is this thing here. And the first thing we do is construct a different value of B. So we've 
So we've got a new value of b. But of course this is still referring to the old value. It's the new value that's constructed. And the first element in the new value of b is 7. And the next one is the old value that was at 4. Which if you look is 2. And in fact I've written them out down here so you can see what they are. So that new value of b is now 7, 2, 5, 4. Right, and then we're indexing the, taking this first element of that, which will be 2, and we're then using that to index into itself again, which will be 0, 1, 2, 5, right, and then we're using, using that fifth element to index into what was effectively the old value. So that will be 9. And so that's why that prints out 9. Now if you followed that and appreciate the difference in between taking the old value and the new value and the effects and so on, you will more or less understood what's going on. And uh, here, just to make things complete, I've printed out the values of A, B and C.